questions as, as we're going through it, then um, please uh, just drop notes and then we can open it up and have some questions at the end. I would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. I don't know how many of you have been to Alaska. The downside of not being able to see a show of hands, I hope some of you have been able to visit up here. But if you haven't, I'm just gonna go through and show you some things um, that you may or may not know about Alaska. All right, with that, I will turn my screen off and we'll get into the presentation. So thank you, Nora, for hosting and inviting me to visit Anchorage today. All right, let's get started. All right, so planes, trains, dog sleds. Turns out Alaska is open year round. I was just telling Nora in our beginning chat, but we started out with a lot of snow. Uh, we got a lot of snow in a short order, and I'm a fan of snow. We call it snow adventure season, so I was quite excited. It warmed up and melted a bunch of it, but we're about to get back into snow, which is perfect in time for December and the winter and snow adventure season, but we are open year-round. We are not just summer destination. So, all right, who we are. We are Visit Anchorage, so we are the Visitor Information Center. We are basically the Convention and Visitor Bureau. Uh, we turned 50 in 2025, which is awesome. We are a nonpartisan group that is destined, dest like, uh, we are designed to help you and connect you with tour operators and all things Anchorage and Alaska. Because we're the largest city in Alaska, we tend to get questions about the entire state, which we're happy to answer. So we are the focus of South Central Alaska and all things uh, visit related. That building just behind our log cabin, that's our log cabin visitor center in downtown Anchorage. Highly recommend everybody starts there. Tons of information packed in that little tiny adorable cabin from the 50s. Um, we have retired dog mushers, retired pilots, retired teachers, a lot of volunteers in there that just love to talk about Anchorage and South Central Alaska and are stock full of information. Every time I go in there and chat with any of our volunteers, then I learn more about Anchorage because we have a lot of lifetime Alaskans with lots of information and are happy to share what someone should do on their vacation. That building behind is the building we just moved out of. So we're in our brand new building two blocks away. Uh, it's the historic city hall back there. So that's who we are as a company, Visit Anchorage. Please reach out to us for any information you may need. That's our jam. I am Heather Roll, just a brief introduction. I have a smattering of my current favorite hobbies. On that little boat in the corner, this is my little 22 foot boat. That is how we catch motion. Most of our food for the winter, we get a lot of salmon, halibut, rockfish, shrimp. Um, what else am I forgetting? Sometimes an octopus will sneak in our shrimp pot, but we, we've turned them back. I'm not a big octopus fan, but I did some loose math this summer. Uh, I caught a halibut, and if I would have bought that halibut in the grocery store, the same amount of weight with current halibut prices, the halibut would have been $1,100. So even with gas prices going up, that little boat is 100% worth its weight, literally in, in gold. I think the halibut was about the same as a gold nugget. Um, and uh, I love fat biking in the winter. I actually figured out I like biking in the winter more than in the summer. And uh, northern lights, which we'll talk at length about. And then that snowy picture, that's what it looked like about three days ago. It does not look quite like that just yet. But um, I work for Visit Anchorage, and you're more than welcome to reach out to me to me by email or phone if you have any questions about Alaska or how to book Alaska. Um, these three publications are all on the web and our website is down there, anchorage.net. I can't, I can't stress enough how actually user-friendly our website is. It's incredible. It really, really has a lot of great information and you can filter. If one of your clients or yourself wants to go fishing, say in the, uh, like south of Anchorage area and they want to go fishing in a river, you can filter by location and by activity. That publication on the left is our travel trade planner. All of these again on PDF or if you would like a paper copy, I'd be happy to send you a paper copy or you can order it from our website as well. Um, that is our travel trade planner, so designed for you, the agents, the bookers. It's um, a lot of useful information but filtered into how to book and uh, the information as you need it filtered to you. have commissionable products in there and all kinds of good things. Um, the black bear, we're on a double bear year. We love our bears up here. 
the little black bear is our uh, visitor guide that you would give to your client or anybody coming through our visitor center would grab that. Lots of good information and ideas, itinerary samples, and then our current uh, restaurant guide. We have lots of great restaurants um, in Alaska, very diverse, lot, lots of seafood, of course, but lots of uh, diverse culinary cuisine up here as well. And then we want you to become an Anchorage Wild expert. This um, webinar that you will go through will make you an Anchorage Wild expert, so that is fantastic. Uh, so you have access to more information and can apply to come on a fam to Alaska with us. We would love that. All right, so Alaska. There was a lot of states I saw. I think we got just about all corners covered of the United States, of the lower United States. Um, so uh, Alaska from east coast to west coast reaches from D.C. to L.A. So she is a big, big, big state. Um, and I don't say that just to put a funny flex on how big we are compared to everybody else, but mostly just to let you know that if you're traveling around Alaska, you need to adjust your time frame. Like I've had friends that come up and they want to go to Juneau and then Valdez and then Fairbanks and then they want to go to Koyak and they want to go see the bears and then they want to drive to Homer. And I always ask them, I'm like, how long are you coming for? About 38 days? And I'll be like, six. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. She's a big state. You have to, you can't do it all in one, one uh, six day trip. So you need to spread it out and you, you want to have a relaxing vacation. So you want to be able to go to as many interesting places as possible, but you don't want to spend the whole time in the car. Um, so I always say for your first trip, pick your top three favorite things and then we'll get the rest on the next trip. Unless, you, unless you're coming for a month, then we can pack it in there. Um, but we have five main areas of Alaska. Um, off to the bottom right there, that's South Central. So if any of the cruise ships are coming through, that's where it's going to wiggle up that inside passage of South Central Alaska. I mean, sorry, South Southeast Alaska. Moving into the green, sorry for my flood there. Moving into the green is South Central. That's the area we're going to focus on. So that's the majority of the state's population. Nearly half of the population of Alaska lives in Anchorage. And a lot of the activities are in that green zone. So you can really check off a lot of boxes just by getting into South Central and using Anchorage as your base camp. And we move a little bit north into the interior, um, Denali National Park and Fairbanks, and then um, all the way up into the Arctic, and then working uh, around down into Southwest. Both the Arctic and Southwest have very, very limited accommodations and the accommodations are either uh, remote lodges of varying stature or really rustic uh, lodging. Not a ton yet, but I, I do see growth in those areas, but most of your accommodations are going to be in southeast, south central, and interior. All right, within that brown bear, the travel trade planner, this I'll just kind of uh, touch on briefly. This is really helpful tool because it has uh, activities and things you can do just in and around South Central, sample itineraries and what have you. But what I love to point out on this is that left-hand side, that double arrow, that shows you how much time it takes to get from place to place by car, by train, or by airplane. That's super, super helpful when you're looking at the map and it may not, not realize how large the state is. It's good to know that you can drive to Fairbanks in seven or eight hours, or you can fly there in one. That makes a big difference. But this is all found on the web as well. Um, and then, so like the know before you go. So before you come to Alaska, what's really great to know is the average temperature. This is this chart that you're seeing is the average for Anchorage area. We are further south, and we are along the water, so we get more of a maritime influence. So we stay more moderate. The interior gets much, much colder. But if we're looking at December there, our average temperature that we're rolling into is 25. So, I mean, we're still in November. We're sitting a bit high right now. We're at like 36 to 45 right now, which is a little warm for November. And that's not great. If you want to keep the snow, you need it right under 32 to be, to be ideal. But in our uh, December coming into December, we're at 25 degrees. And then our coldest month on average is January right next door there at 23 degrees Fahrenheit. I know for, uh, I think it was Moana I saw in Hawaii and then 
Nora said she's in Georgia. That might seem very cold, but that's quite moderate considering. You know, a lot of people think we're just a big ice cube all year round, but we are we're not quite that. Like it's actually quite doable. It's only three layers. The key to Alaska is layers. Always have a base layer, a medium layer, and then an outer layer. And with those three, depending in the summertime, if we're cruising around, like we look, June can be an average of 63 degrees, but easily in the daytime, in the center of the day, like when the sun is the highest at about 3 p.m. because we have so much daylight, it'll pop up to 78, 75, sometimes 80 degrees, no problem. So you can bring a short sleeve shirt and then like a medium layer for mornings and nights, but maybe in the summertime you'll need to get into that coat later in the evening. But look at that daylight, 22 hours of daylight. So that's where it gets really fun. I've seen people mowing their lawn at 9 p.m. I've seen people going for midnight hikes because you can do that. So it's a really exciting time. But um, all in all, much more uh, doable temperatures in our region. So how do you get to Alaska? Well, the two main ways, like one way that you hear of most common is the uh, cruising in the summertime. Uh, this past year, um, a couple of outfits actually cruised into October for the first time. It used to be a pretty hard cutoff in the beginning of September, but we are seeing a little bit more warmer climate and more interest coming later in the season. So there was cruises that were coming into September and October this year, which is, I haven't heard the numbers of how full those boats were, but I believe that it was quite successful. So I don't see any reason why October cruises won't continue happening. But this is one way you can get into the mainland. Um, so there are the options. Some of them only go from like Vancouver or Seattle, go up to Juneau or Skagway, and then turn around and go back. Pro tip, pro move, is to cross that Gulf of Alaska and then come into South Central um, Anchorage, uh, well, near Anchorage, either Whittier or Seward. Seward's a two-hour drive. Whittier is a one-hour drive from Anchorage. So that really gets you into the belly of the beast of Alaska. Or if it was me, I would probably exhaust myself on land if I needed to do the cruise and then hop on the cruise and eat and drink my way all the way home. Other successful ways of getting to Alaska, we do have an international airport. We are the third busiest cargo airport in the world, which is pretty mind-boggling when you think about it. Um, not, not for passengers, but for cargo, but we do have an international airport that is plenty ready to handle lots of airplanes coming and going. Alaska Airlines has some great routes, um, and then Delta is also, Alaska Airlines and Delta are two main that offer the most, so they partner with American Airlines, and a few United flights come in as well. Uh, so that's an easy way. So that's how you get to Alaska, um, and then there is like, a, you can connect, if some people do want to drive their motor home up, you can connect all the way by road, it takes about four days to drive from Seattle if you're really cruising, if you're taking the motor home all the way into the mainland. Um, three hour flight from Seattle or a four day drive, so your choice. <laughs> uh, but as a city, this is our cute little city. Uh, we like to say that we are urban and wild. We are a mixture of having true city amenities. We do have restaurants and stores um, and things that sometimes people don't always think about, but then we are pretty wild. Like we have those mountains, that's about a 15, 20 minute drive and you are in the Chugach Mountains and you don't hit another town for quite some time once you hit those mountains. So again, urban and wild. We have wildlife in the city. We have about 1,500 moose that live in and around Anchorage. Um, but then again, the city of Minnesota. We like to say mild to wild, how how adventurous you want to get, and that we are urban and wild. There's just a pretty little photo of our little city. So once you get here, then how do you get around? So you come in by cruise ship or you come in by plane, and now how are you going to get around from there? So we have then smaller planes, we have trains, and we have dog sleds. Uh, I like to say that's not as much the means of transportation anymore, so we do actually have vehicles as well, and we have nice uh, uh, itinerary building people that can drive you around or we can rent cars. This is great news that our rental car, I know a lot of people the last few years have had a hard time renting cars because the stock were sold off or plummeted, but we are doing much, much better, and we actually have uh, a good supply of rental cars coming from both Anchors and Fairbanks. 
So that's very nice. You can drive yourself around as well, especially in the summertime. Highly, highly, highly recommend because it's so beautiful and there's so many reasons to pull over up here. So it's a great idea. If your clients are comfortable, then I highly suggest renting a car so they can pull over whenever they see something beautiful. And then we asked people a few years ago, like, what, what do you think of when you think of Alaska? Or what do you want to see when you come up here? And as I'm saying this, I hope some of you are thinking of what, what do you think of when you think of Alaska? Or what are on your bucket list? What do I need to check off when I come up here? So um, one of those things was mountains. And this is right from downtown Anchorage. This is Sleeping Lady Mountain. If you look, does it look like a lady sleeping? to you. I call her the matriarch of Anchorage. She, no matter where you are, you always see her laying peacefully, um, but it's like kind of the head to the left. Um, and that is our Sleeping Lady Mountain. And then on a clear day from our hillside, you can see Mountain Alley. That is that is Denali and his buddies Hunter and Forager. So this is um, 180 miles as the crow flies, but on a beautiful clear day, you can see it quite easily from Anchorage, which is awesome. We have five mountain ranges, five different mountain ranges that you can see from Anchorage, depending on, uh, as long as you're on the hill, from this angle right here, I could see five different mountain ranges, which is amazing. People also want things like culture, and we have a lot of that with the Anchorage Museum. Our, our cute little city is uh, founded in 1919, so politically it's quite young, but historically it's very old. We've had people on this land for 10,000 years, so we very interesting to go and see how the people of the past live in this somewhat difficult climate. I love that I get to go to REI and buy a puppy coat that suits me. I don't have to get it from an animal, but it is incredibly interesting to go see how the people of the past lived. And so there's this amazing museum exhibit that shows you the different uh, tools and clothing styles of the different people from the different regions. If you think, um, Southern Anchorage and 25 degree average is quite a bit different than the, the tippy top of Alaska on the Arctic Sea. A little bit colder, so they need slightly different uh, tools and clothing. So our museum is wonderful for that. Uh, we also have the Alaska Native Heritage Center, which is incredible because it shows a more in-depth way of how our, our five uh, umbrella cultures of the Native people lived and it has five different houses. You can see three of the five houses from here. So it's a recreation of traditional houses, but another amazing museum that shows you the history and culture. We have uh, the Anchorage Trolley that can uh, get you between those two museums or just do like a little one hour tour of downtown Anchorage. And uh, they always have fun stories. I like taking this with the different drivers because each driver has their own little spin and their own little side story on it. Um, that also takes you around to some of our murals that are popping up around Anchorage. We're getting a new one or two every summer, so that's really fun. Uh, I really enjoy that. Some people want to see and do the hiking of Alaska. We have 225 parks just in and around Anchorage and 60 and growing notable trailheads. And this is where that mild to wild comes in. Some people want to keep it easy. Some people want to go straight up the side of the hill. We have both of those things for you, like stunning views. And this is a relatively easier trail, but with amazing views. Or you can um, go down the a rainforest river valley. You could climb right to the top of Flat Top Mountain there. And then don't forget that we are open in winter as well. This is the exact same place as right this picture. And this picture is the exact same place, just in summer or winter. So if you want to you wanna snowshoe, then you can come on out and snowshoe. If these gals step just a few feet to one direction, they would probably be about thigh deep in snow. So if you want to feel like you're floating on fluffy air, come up and go snowshoeing. We have lots of great bike trails, which you can bike in the summer or the winter. We just swap out those tires, put some slightly fatter tires on so you can float across the snow. Uh, we have cross-country ski trails just to the left. You can see some groomed ski trails on that same trail. And this is just right along the road, right from downtown Anchorage. Uh, we have this trail. It's a, this is basically the a map of Anchorage. And someone with one of those cool Strava apps or whatever neatest, greatest app that tracks what your activity is. He did um, a pretty rad, pretty radical day activity. 
And then he got done and he looked at the map and it looked like a moose. So if you see the, like the left hand side of that map kind of looks like a moose face. This is the accidental discovery of the moose loop. It's quite fitting that in and around Anchorage we have all of those moose and we love our moose up here, but it's complete coincidence that we have a moose loop now, which is pretty fun. That's about 33 miles if you have the activity. I live in the right angle, just where his neck would be. I go left and around the coast and about where his ears are is a delightful brewery that my friend comes and picks me up from. So I do I do a small chunk and treat myself to a beer and then continue on. But lots of trails, lots of trails in Anchorage. Um, and then some of them you might come across some actual wildlife. Always give moose a wide berth. They're beautiful, but sometimes they want to come and see you and see what you're up to as well. Uh, I know in some of the regions of the world that you guys are, there's lots of golfing. People don't often think of Alaska as a golfing destination, but because we have all that daylight in the summertime, we can only imagine how late our tea times are. Our latest tea time in the summer is 10 p.m. So if you wanted to start a round of golf at 10 p.m., you can absolutely do that. And sometimes you even see a little wildlife. This is my fuzziest worst picture that I'll show you today, but it is straight up from an iPhone camera because there's an actual black bear on the course shaking the pole, almost enticing for a hole in one. So we have that. This is all activities right in Anchorage. Um, this is our downtown and just past downtown. We have this beautiful ship creek where you can catch, uh, if you're lucky and know what you're doing, you can catch a, a giant king salmon and you can have a packed ship right there and like it can, it will probably beat you home. So you'll probably need someone to uh, receive the mail for you for a little bit of salmon. But that's right, right from downtown Anchorage. You can see the hills in there. Or if you want to go just about 15, 20 minutes down the road, we have the more traditional setting, the, the rivers that aren't set in the middle of the city, but we have amazing rivers all over, all over the state. And so you can have the more traditional fishing experience. Um, right, whoops, right from Anchorage, like that leads into our culinary scene. We have an amazing culinary scene, lots of great restaurants. I'm always impressed with our restaurants. And this past summer, I was even more impressed. They were just really nailing it. Uh, we have 13 breweries in the city of Anchorage, and I think we just hit our 54th in state, which per capita is we're doing pretty good there. I think we're fourth highest per capita for our breweries. Um, so that, and beer tourism has become quite a thing. So if you're here in today, come up and do that. We also, fun fact, eat more ice cream per capita than any other state in the nation. So we have some really amazing ice cream up here, and we eat a ton of it. Um, and if we're getting just outside of Anchorage, those are all activities you can do just in Anchorage. And using Anchorage as your base camp is a great, a great way. I know a lot of people want to get out into the wilderness. They can settle into Anchorage for two, three nights, use it as their base camp, and then continue on into the wilderness and like the more remote places if they like. This is just 45 minutes south of Anchorage. We have the Alyeska Resort. It is a full service ski resort. It actually opened um, on Thanksgiving Friday, so it just opened last week. It's a sea level ski resort, which is pretty magical. That's the water that you see out there. So not a lot of people get to ski and look at the ocean at the same time. It's super rare in that sense. Our average is about 650 inches of snow per year, which is quite magical. So if you want if you want to go skiing and you want the guaranteed snow, we usually have more snow um, by mid-January than most of the East Coast resorts get all year. So it's a really fun experience. Or if you're not into that, it also opened a, a year and a half ago, it opened the new Nordic Spa. So seven outdoor hot tubs, uh, steam rooms, and cold dip pl plunges. So the idea is that you get in a hot tub and then you hop in a cold plunge and it's invigorating and refreshing. So we have we have that right there as well. And it's great for those who do like half the couple wants to ski or wants to go skiing in that Nordic Spa. And it's a really incredible experience. And then the inclement weather, it's a perfect outdoor inclement weather thing. If you've ever been in a hot tub when it's raining, you know that it's kind of more of a magical experience than if it's just a hot sunny day. So it's a great, a great rainy day activity. It's also a full service wilderness resort all summer long. So you don't have to be a skier all summer long. It's just nestled in the mountains and it's absolutely magical. Right down the road from that, we also have the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. This place is great if you want to guarantee wildlife. It's a nonprofit 
for injured and orphaned bears in the wild, so it's not a zoo. They're designed to live more in their natural habitat, so they have more space, more room to roam, and it is um, scientific and helping to educate on how to, you know, keep these animals thriving, which you get wolves, you get bears, you get muskox. So if you haven't happened to see a moose in the wild yet, it's a fantastic opportunity, and you can sign up for an animal encounter or a feeding experience. Um, you are able to help feed the moose. They feed the bears, obviously. You don't want it too close. But it is a really wonderful way to get uh, to see the wild animals in a natural setting, but still in more of a guaranteed check-off-the-box setting. Um, if you want to get into the backcountry, but there's maybe mixed low mobility or lower mobility, you don't necessarily want to hike too far. We do have ATVs that can get you into the backcountry. Uh, you can go kayaking. And again, these are all things within 45 minutes of Anchorage. So using Anchorage as your race camp, you can hop out, go kayaking, and then be back in the city for a nice dinner. Um, and you can also participate in our one professional sport. We don't have professional baseball or basketball or any of the things. We just don't have the population for it up here. We only have 700,000 people in the entire state. So our one professional sport is the Iditarod Sled Dog Race. The, uh, the dogs are the athletes, the humans are there to make sure they get a lot of love and pet petting and that they get fed. But it is also a really fun way, the fun day activity. You can you can uh, sign up to mush your own sled dog team or you can just assist and have someone else do it. But it is quite entertaining and if you happen to find yourself here only in the summertime, we do dry land dog sledding tours as well, which is just just as fun. These dogs are so excited. They are so jazzed to get out there and ride around. Fun thing also is that there's not an Amazon store for a dry land dog sledding sled, if you will, air quotes there. So each one, each kennel has hand designed and built their own. So there's all these kind of fun different apparatuses of the, the dog sled for the dry land, but it's still a very fun experience. Or in the smack middle of summer, you can do the double whammy and fly in a helicopter and it will fly you up to elevation where we have snow. We don't have snow at low elevation, low, lower elevations, but somewhere in Alaska there's snow at all times of year. So you can fly up to a, a snow field on a mountain, at usually around 6,000 feet elevation, and then there's a dog sledding experience up there. That's a way to do it, right? Helicopters to dog sleds, that's a good day. And there's always puppies. There's always puppies. Um, they like for people to help socialize the puppies. Uh, so you give the puppy snuggles and they get socialized and everybody wins. Another method of getting around Anchorage, or in and around the state of Alaska rather, is the railroad. So our railroad is 100 years old this year. It is an absolutely gorgeous railroad that takes you through amazing scenery. It does connect to both of the two um, cruise ship ports. So that's a really cool op uh, opportunity to come off the cruise ship. And if you don't want to rent a car or what have you, you can take the train. So this is the entire rail belt we're looking at. Um, Seward being the southernmost terminus, which is one of our two main cruise ship, port, cruise ship ports. Whittier being the other one. And then they all stop at Anchorage at least overnight. And then you could continue on north from Anchorage all the way up to Fairbanks or stop in any of those towns. It does pull right into the Valley National Park, um, look to the edge of it, and then you can get into the actual park from the train, which is cool. It has uh, two floor cars. Um, they have a mixture of one floor cars and two floor cars that have these open air areas. It's one of the only trains in the world that has these open air cars, which is really neat. Uh, we have the most amazing air on the planet. I've been searching around for better air. I haven't found it yet, but I'll keep searching. But when you're standing on the back of an open air platform in Alaska, breathing in that fresh air, something something magical happens. Uh, it has the connection to different areas that can connect you with both in Prince William Sound or along the uh, way to Denali National Park or to Spencer Glacier. Some of the train, uh, a lot of it follows near the um, driving road, the car road, but some of the areas peel off and you get back into mountain passes that are only accessible by train, which is really magical. 
um, it can get you right into Denali. They have a reservations team as well. So if you are interested in booking with them, they have an entire reservations team and they could book in theory in a, uh, like a seven day itinerary uh, or a nine day itinerary. They can work directly with you and cater it to exactly what you're looking for. If you want to spend more than one day in Chalkitna, then they can open that up and you can spend several days in Chalkitna. They're a great resource. And then they also go in winter. So only north of Anchorage in winter, there's too many avalanche paths uh, if you head south of Anchorage in the winter time. So only north in the winter, but what a cool way to see Alaska um, by train in the winter. It travels uh, every single day in the summertime and has limited offerings in the winter time. So if someone is coming in the winter, you may just wanna book around the railroad first because it does not go every single day. It goes only a few days a week. But look at that, that'd be amazing to see the, the winter train. Another way to get around, if you're off the railroad system, if you're off the road system, which most of Alaska is not accessible by road or railroad, then we have planes. This is Lake Hood right here. This is right outside of Anch or right in Anchorage, um, right outside the International Airport. This is the busiest float plane lake in the world. On a beautiful summer day like this, you're probably seeing anywhere from 500 to 1,000 float planes come take off and land lot of access to the rest of Alaska. So if someone wants to get remote, they're doing it by plane. This is all the little slips on the lake, but then we have the access and we have float planes. And then the winter time, you can see kind of behind those slopes that we have skis that can be put on the plane and you can actually land on a snowfield or on a glacier. This is actually on Denali. You can land on Denali Mountain right next to the glacier. Helicopters, we're seeing more helicopters for flight team tours, not just the kind that go up, go around the city in 30 minutes and land. There's, we're seeing some now going out to Katmai, and we have access to these eight national parks by either plane or by helicopter. For reference, um, helicopters take about four times the amount of fuel than those float planes, so they, those helicopters can still get you there. It's just gonna be about four times the amount of fuel, so with that comes the cost, as you can imagine. So we have eight national parks in the state of Alaska. A lot of those you can only access by plane or by helicopter. That's Katmai, the world famous. Um, we've all seen that picture probably 13 different ways. The world famous Katmai National Park, we're looking in uh, Western Alaska when we do this, Lake, national, Lake Clark National Park, of course, Denali National Park, a 45 minute flight for a four and a half hour drive. Um, that one you can drive to. Wrangell, you can also drive to. Wrangell Fun Fact, second largest national park in the country. Uh, Kenai Fjord, this is a water national park, but these parks have access to the wildlife, and we have the brown bears, of course, and then um, access to glaciers by planes and helicopters. Any guesses on how many glaciers we have in Alaska? If you said 100,000, you are correct. Give or take a couple, we have 100,000 glaciers in the state of Alaska, and people it's one of the main things that people want to see. They want to see the big fields of ice. And again, the helicopters can take you there. Mm. You can, we have what we call walk up glaciers where you can walk up to them. This is just outside of Seward, where we actually have people that do tours on the glacier. I can't stress enough how you should never go glacier walking without a guide. They know where where the space the spaces you should walk and not walk are. So but you can actually hike on the glacier in the winter time, only in the winter can you actually hike into the glacier, which is super cool if you've never been in the ice cave. It's quite amazing. You can snowmobile to the edge of a glacier. You can even boat to a glacier. This is out of Prince William Sound. And uh, I particularly like this boat because they'll scoop up a little bit of the glacier ice and make you a little glacier margarita if you so desire, or a ginger beer. No. Doesn't have to be A, can be not A, uh, but it's quite an experience. And this, the boats can get you right up next to the glaciers. And it's also in that maritime wildlife. We have the sea lions and the seals. I got to see the re release of three baby seals into the wild. Just coincidentally, I was on a boat and we got radio that they were re releasing three baby seals. I think just about everybody on the boat was like a little choked up. There's not. Not a lot of talking. When you see the re-release of the baby seals, you're like, what? <laughs> uh, and then we have the orcas. Of course, the orcas. Uh, out of Seward. And the sea otters, little otter buddies. 
as I like to call them. And then uh, to close them down, so we're about at that time, I want to talk about Northern Lights. The Northern Lights are a hot button right now. Everybody wants to see the Northern Lights, and I can't blame them. It is something to be experienced for sure. So first off, you can only see the Northern Lights from fall into spring. They happen all year round. We just have that daylight problem that we were talking about earlier. 22 hours of daylight in the summer and never getting dark. We just can't see them in the summertime. They do happen, we just cannot see them because it's too light. So really from September all the way to April is when you can view them. And the more hours of darkness you have, the more opportunity you have to see them. What's really, really exciting is that we are coming into the peak of the cycle. So Northern Lights are on an 11-year cycle. I see someone coming next, or this coming August, next August. Um, 2025 is the peak of the cycle, of that 11-year cycle. So they're going to be the absolute best that they're going to be in 11 years in 2025. But I can tell you that last winter, I saw them better than I've ever seen them. And they're supposed to be even better this winter. And then again, better in 2025. And then coming off of that peak, so the year after, will be exceptional as well. What that boils up down to. Really, if you just have someone that wants to see the Northern Lights, do it in the next three years. It's going to be the absolute best. A lot of people think that you have to go to the very tippy of Alaska or to the dead interior. You do not. What you're looking at here is the KP index um, or the the band of visibility. So you in within that whole green band, you can absolutely see the Northern Lights and you can see the Anchorage Fault in that. A lot of people think Fairbanks only, um, and it's not Fairbanks only. Yes, you can see them as well. They have more clear days than Anchorage does, but we have more temperature. We have more warmth. So between Anchorage and Talkeetna, you can see them absolutely incredibly, but you're probably doing it at about 20 to 30 degrees warmer, which that helps. But if you have someone that really, really, really wants to see the Northern Lights, going to both places is a, quite a nice experience. So, and they say. Um, if you can get the clear days, and we have uh, Northern Lights tour operators, Greyland Adventures is phenomenal at it. Uh, they have a 92% success rate. If they say they're going out to see the Northern Lights, then they generally find them. They're very, very good at it. And they won't take you out and take your money if you don't. If it's not, if you're not going to be able to see them, they're not going to take the tour. They only take the tour if they know they'll be able to see them, which is great. So that band availability, Anchorage is right in there. And these photos are all from in and around Anchorage. And what still photography can never do is beautiful, yes, but can never capture the movement that you see with it. It is just absolutely incredible. And that's right there from that lake hood. Um, I have a skylight in my roof in my personal home. And sometimes I get too lazy to go outside, so I just put pillows and blankets on the carpet in my living room and look up through the skylight and can see the northern lights. It's pretty cool. And that's from above Anchorage, from the hillside, from like 10 minutes away from Anchorage, down along the water's edge. And with that, we say thank you so much. Thank you uh, for joining me for the Anchorage, um, visit Anchorage. Um, welcome to Alaska presentation, if you will, and if you have any questions at any time um, about how to book, who to book, who to reference, um, a lot of the folks I talked about are all on our website. We really do have a great website that is super helpful in answering a lot of the questions, so please, please reach out, hrule at anchorage.net. Again, my name is Heather, and thank you so much. If anybody has any questions, please throw them in the chat, and I would be happy to answer. And once again, thank you, Ms. Heather, for that amazing presentation. You brought back a lot of memories from me. I was in, Af in uh, Anchorage back in 2013. And one of the questions you asked was, what are some of the things that uh, people expect to see? A lot of people said the bears. And that was one of the things that I saw, too, the bears and the moose, which was exciting. So once again, if anyone have any questions for Ms. Heather, please put them in the chat box. So we could get all of your questions answered. You're getting a lot of thank you. Awesome presentation. It's pretty cool up here. Sometimes people are surprised I actually live here. I'm like, where else would I live? That would be crazy. <laughs> okay, to ask for what was the website again? I believe Miss Keisha put that in there a little earlier. Anchorage.net. 
super easy. All right, and Thank you for that. Anchorage.net, and you can get to me and all my coworkers right there from the website. But really great website to see um, activities and tour operators and all the good stuff. Okay, okay. Okay, seemed like you did a wonderful job because they're saying um thanks for the great presentation. Um and that someone asks is that's where you get the certificate from. Because you participated in this presentation, you are now all Anchorage Wild experts. So thank you for that. Congratulations. Um so if Nora, if you want to send me their contact information, then I will send them a certificate and then more information about how you can stay in contact with us. Okay, well, thank you. Well, if everybody would, please put your um email in the uh, chat box for us, okay? Or, yeah. Do you have a list of that, Nora, that you can shoot to me? If not, I can go back in and, like, pull it all from here, which works as well. Great. I think we should be, yeah, we should be able to put it up for you. Uh, Ms. Keisha says she'll send it to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Congratulations, everyone. You're wild experts. Ah, oh, thank you. Hang it out. Awesome presentation. I'm trying to go back and see what I see any questions for anyone. I see a lot of uh, emails coming in for you. Perfect. That's good news. That's good news. I'll send. I will all. I will send you all the good stuff. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Well, if no other questions, then I look forward to chatting with you in the future. And okay, so someone asked a question about how much, but I'm not sure. Okay, they said those are trip calls. That varies. That absolutely varies. What we do have, you know, again, with if you want to stay on the road system, you can do it quite affordably. Um, if you want to get remote, once you start incorporating uh, small planes, remote lodges, and helicopters, um, it can it can go up from there. It's probably one of the harder questions to answer. Um, just because it's really all about that person's experiences. But um, I'm, I've been fine, really good prices. I flew to Boston for $320 one way about two, three weeks ago. So it all depends on, um, the flights have been pretty good lately, which is great because they were really getting quite expensive and that was not good for anybody's pocketbook. Okay, and someone asked, what time is it in Alaska now? We are one hour behind Pacific time. So um, it is 347 in Alaska right now. Um, Thank you. Shortest day of the year. The sun is about to set here in about 45 minutes, which is funny. We do get a okay. lot of our dust <gasps> out for 45 minutes. So it'll be completely dark by about 5 p.m. <laughs> this oh, time wow. Okay. Uh, someone asks, how do we register? um for that depends on for what but you can do everything through the travel trade section on the anchorage.net so anchorage.net travel trade you can register um for a fam you can register for uh to sign up for an e-newsletter well but i think anything you're looking for would be anchorage.net travel trade okay thank you wonderful wonderful Okay, do we have any more questions um, that you would like to ask her before we um, close it out? Well, that's good. I was cool. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So I don't see any more questions coming in, and we do greatly appreciate you taking the time to come and uh, share this uh, information, valuable information with us. And on behalf of our One Star Platinum leader, Ms. Nina Jackson, uh, Ms. Nina Mitchell, we thank you. And this webinar is officially over. You guys have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. And I will email how to register. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you on down the road.